All right, so earlier this year, there were a couple of articles and some coverage floating around the internet about the Samsung Odyssey Arc, which quite frankly, there's not really much in this world you can compare this display to. It's kind of wacky, it's strange, but at the end of the day, it's kind of interesting. Now this was first showcased by Samsung at CES, and honestly, when I first heard of it, I thought it looked sick, maybe a bit of a far stretch. It looked like this state-of-the-art futuristic concept display. It looks like something maybe you'd see in an episode of Black Mirror or just the apocalypse in general where the only way to interact with humanity is using like a crazy display like this because it does look kind of normal right now if you can call a 55 inch monitor normal, but you can rotate this display completely vertically. And I think a lot of companies go to these shows with show stopping products that are just meant to grab eyeballs, wow the crowd. But when I found out this was actually being released as a consumer product, I think it got a lot of us thinking. Is this gonna be even usable or even worth looking into? So I ordered one, forked over the most amount of money I've ever spent on a single product for review. And now that the display released and a lot of the hype dust finally settled, before this, I can say that my experience using displays of this size vertically is pretty limited. The only thing I can think of is like, McDonald's ordering kiosks, if you know what I'm talking about, like the stuff where you order like nuggets and a Big Mac. That's pretty much it. I've had this display for about a week now and I've got a lot of thoughts and opinions about it. Without a doubt, when I first got it in the office, I was essentially blown away by how absolutely giant this thing is. The camera does not do it justice whatsoever, especially when you're standing next to this and what Samsung is calling cockpit mode is crazy. If you happen to play a title on this display and for whatever reason, the vertical mode, I tried Escape from Tarkov just to see how that would go. Pretty sure I was one of the only people on earth playing that game in that aspect ratio. It's kind of absurd. Another thing to mention is that when I was setting up this monitor, it is really, really heavy. It weighs like 100 pounds setting it up, probably the heaviest panel I've ever personally had to set up. The game was getting to the point where other players were nearing life size. Not sure who would actually ever play a game like this, but a pretty wacky experience that you don't have peripheral vision whatsoever. Now again, I mentioned that it was very heavy. It's almost like a desk support benchmark tool to test if your table is worthy enough. I have this on a standing desk because my normal countertop without a center leg would easily cave in under this. Now Samsung is really pushing the specs of this screen all over their product material. So listen to this. The Odyssey Arc is a 55 inch 16 by nine 4K HDR up to 2000 nits, quantum mini LED with 165 Hertz, a one millisecond response time with support for AMD FreeSync, and it has a 1000 R curve. There's also speakers scattered around the edges of the display, four in the corners, two woofers in the center, and support for Dolby Atmos, and it costs $3,500. So this thing is expensive. I think for the small niche group of people that are even considering a display like this, would probably wanna replace three comparable 27 inch monitors, which this display in vertical mode is essentially what you're getting. But this all comes with a catch and we'll talk about this in just a moment. The first thing I wanna do is I wanna show you the vertical mode process. You literally have to just lift the TV all the way up and then turn it completely vertically. And that's how the monitor will switch. And notice how it's actually switching to the center screen now, but then I can adjust that with the two included remotes that are, this kind of looks like a calculator and the other one looks like a standard remote. They're both solar powered, so you don't have to worry about charging them. I think that's cool. The pairing process also is fairly simple. The one thing about this though, is it does look like an accountant's weapon. Overall, this package does a lot of stuff well and a lot of stuff not so well. So Samsung is calling this the arc dial. This is how you're gonna control the screen and the multi-view modes. Now the center dial has this bank vault, like tactile click when you turn the ring. I think it makes it pretty intuitive, pretty easy and streamlined to adjust settings, screen size, aspect ratio, and place the usable screen wherever you want within the giant usable space. It's really neat. You can fit up to four different screens of content in multi-view and adjust the sizes to fit whatever your needs. And let's talk about the curve. If you notice, it's very aggressive. So it kind of tries to envelop you in this immersive dome. And it essentially keeps your eyes looking at a flat piece of panel, depending on where you're looking at it. Realistically, gaming on this is legit. Samsung calls the landscape mode a personal gaming theater. I don't know if I'd call it that, but there's no dirty screen effect that I could see. And because of the curve, it takes up a ton of your peripheral vision. So if you're swinging around in Spider-Man building to building, it's very immersive, almost too much if you're sitting too close. There's 
1056 local dimming zones, and it also makes HDR games look really good. Now the question of how useful 4K at 165 hertz is gonna be dependent on the system you have to drive all these pixels. I still personally have to drive the settings down just a little bit to keep the frame rates high, and NVIDIA announced 40 series yesterday, if you still respect them as a company and are into that, rip EVGA. Honestly speaking, if none of this matters to you and you have a 4K Xbox Series X setup or a PS5 setup, this is gonna be completely fine, party on with that. Now remember when I mentioned earlier before how there is a catch to all of this, especially in the vertical mode, We'll talk about that right now. So while Samsung is using a one connect box with four different HDMI 2.1 inputs, you can only use one at a time. That means you can't connect a console and a PC and have them both running at once. So you can only really use for the other screen space, Tizen OS apps, which is literally just Samsung's smart TV apps, like the browser, YouTube app. It's okay, it's just not what you'd imagine when you hear it's like having three 27 inch monitors stacked. Not really. Plus you essentially lose out on the fast response times and panel clarity when you have the display in the vertical mode and are using the bottom 27 inch portion as a singular monitor. Now I did wonder how this display would fare on my desk because it's really heavy. I didn't wanna place it on the center of this desk so I was able to get this desk and use it on this guy. And I wanted to talk about this desk from FlexiSpot just for a little bit to mention how cool they were to send over this desk. And I actually really like it, especially if you're looking to get something really heavy or some massive monitor on your desk. I'm using this Bamboo FlexiSpot Pro Plus standing desk, which they were cool enough to send over and save the other table from getting crushed. It's made from carbon steel, has full height adjustment with easily the smoothest motor adjustment I've ever used. I have another standing desk that I use alongside this one and the FlexiSpot desk had a better fit and finish and was quieter right out of the box. It also helps in general to have a standing desk, especially if you're running a really large display. So you can adjust the desk to whichever specific height you want for whichever monitor or setup you're running. The touchpad also makes the whole setup easy to adjust and it even has built-in ports to charge whatever you need. By the way, they didn't pay me to say any of this. I just think their stuff is great, gets the job done, and I recommend it. If you wanna hear more about it or check it out yourself, I'll have the links in the description down below. So now we can move on back to the Odyssey Arc. I'd say the best usable setups I've found for this display are number one, gaming in full screen. And I kind of found the vertical mode to be a bit difficult to find a real world application in, other than running Windows in portrait mode. Which by the way, does work fine just by stacking individual windows on top of each other when you have the display in the vertical mode. But then again, it's probably gonna come at the price of whatever a chiropractor is gonna charge you to fix your neck after you're done looking at the screen, literally hover over your head. I don't know, it's like Samsung didn't quite fully commit to truly making this display a realistic option with a price tag of $3,500. So the real question about this has been, do any of these features really make it worth its price tag? The vertical mode for multitasking, even though you're limited to one input at a time. Does a 4K 165 Hertz curved display make it absolutely game changing? Probably not. Is the built-in Stadia and Xbox streaming worth it to you? Are you a programmer, stock trader? I don't know. Honestly, I feel like this would have been a great contender for a top display if it wasn't competing against such competitively priced displays like LG's OLED lineup that often gets hit with markdowns and offer a really good value. It's a tough pill to swallow and difficult to figure out who is really gonna wanna get one of these, especially having to deal with all the shortcomings. Maybe Samsung's gonna take another shot at this next year, make something a bit more manageable and realistic. It's a shocker for sure at first, but once you spend some time with it, you realize it's kinda half-baked. So pretty much I have to, all I have to say, it's a cool concept and I'll have links to some alternative displays in the description below, as well as the FlexiSpot desk if you wanna support the channel and get yourself a solid desk. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. 